What's going on, everybody? Physio Trader here. Now, the market is continuously making a massive room and a massive push to the upside. And so the question is, is, is this the bear market rally or is this the full blown out reversal and the bottom is over? Um, I'll be honest. I don't know. I mean, if you would have asked me a week ago, I would have thought this was a bear market rally. Uh, now, I'm actually, as, as the market gets higher and higher and higher, I'm getting increasingly... Um, optimistic which is probably you know silly um you know considering the fact that macroeconomically nothing's changed uh they've raised interest rates jerome powell said at his very boring meeting a couple days that um that yes that the the full effects of raising those interest rates have not been felt yet and a lot of uh, of the fed members are saying things like you know we, we think we're going to be able to start slowing down and i think a lot of people are getting into this mentality this mindset this notion that well, we're just going to flip course, start printing money again. They're nowhere near close to the federal funds, you know, getting getting their expected rate of inflation down to 2%. There's absolutely nothing that is going to bring it down other than raising interest rates above the level of inflation. We have seen for a very long time that they're not able or willing to do that. And... Um, I don't see anything in the short term that's going to change that. Now, in the in the the next two to three years, uh, is inflation going to come down? Sure, potentially. But here's the thing. So, you know, looking at some of the things that my wife and I we, we went car shopping the other day, and they're like, "Well, the the demand is so high," and I'm like, "Okay, is is the demand high, or is it because the supply chains have been so greatly affected that the the low, incredibly low supply?" further extrapolates or further exacerbates the feeling of a supply chain crunch. Uh, to said differently, uh, because de or because supply is so, so low, any sort of demand feels like an over exuberant demand. And so I would, um, I would be cautious to anyone who thinks that the demand is actually all that high. I personally don't think demand is high. I think demand is probably normal. Um, supply is just incredibly, incredibly low. As uh, supply increases, I think demand is going to not necessarily drop off, but I think demand is going to have the feeling of a massive drop off. And you look at things like the housing market, um, you know, the stocks, everything like this, um, everyday items, I think we're going to start to get a little bit of a pivotal shift. But the question is, is do, um, you know, what do we think the market is going to happen and go from there? So let's take a look at the market. So over here, we got Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge. Uh, the market is closed. We've got after hours stuff going on here. So wild, wild day. Um, first thing I wanted to look up was QNRX. This bad boy is up at one point up 550% now that of course that's not too hard when you started at a $3 stock on the day but just looking at this this is absolute bonkers now of course um, maybe this is a massive uh, uh, I guess it had a so a reverse split so you know is this a a massive squeeze this is certainly I mean this thing is about to get delisted uh, it had a reverse split 1 to 12 and a half reverse split so this is not something you want to be buying long term uh, this this would absolutely be silly in my opinion but of course uh, that does not mean if you're out there trading it for five seconds ten seconds a minute or two that you're not going to be able to take advantage of this this is certainly something that you can scalp trade very quickly but be cautious because I would not be loading the boat on this bad boy so um, uh, next up, the Qs. Super interested with uh, the Qs over here. Uh, the Qs have been going up. Taking a look at the daily. So this is the TQs, just uh, giving you a little bit of a smaller number here. Um, but I really thought that these, you know, two upper wicks on the lower day, the last two days was going to lead us to a downside, at least around 31. And we have, you know, the buyers just keep showing up and they keep showing up with strength, uh, which is good, which is, you know, not, not necessarily problematic, but I really, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I feel like we're in this over here. And so I still feel like there is a leg down to come. And the reason is, is because we're just we're not there yet and so before we get to the next one so you know i, I keep hearing when, when is this recession going to happen when are we going to have this recession the fact is is in my opinion and many others economists besides the current administration really just feel like we are in a recession okay the only thing that they can see positively going on right now is that there is low uh, unemployment now the reason there's low unemployment same thing to the supply and demand curve is it because there's low unemployment or is it because a lot of retirees or a lot of new retirees 
bowed out of the market, okay? We know that for the last several generations, each generation thereafter is having less and less children, which means uh, the family size is getting smaller and smaller. And that is uh, going to come to a very, you know, that's going to decimate the economy in the years to come. But right now, we knew the last wave was the very end of the baby boomer era as they fit to retire, which was the last two years going into this year and next. And so, is it really that we have low unemployment or is it just a lot of people are saying, you know what, I'm done, peace out, and uh, I'm taking my retirement and I'm going to walk. And so I definitely think that's a big part of it. It's not to say that it's all of it, but what we have right now is we have a lot of big companies making massive layoffs. So I don't necessarily think that's a recipe for um, we're not in a recession. Still think we're in a recession. Um, and I think what we're not even going to come close to acknowledging this recession until the general person starts to realize that it's not getting better anytime soon. Now, of course, I would love to be wrong on this. I've said it before. I don't want a recession. A recession is not going to be good news for the markets. Um, it's not going to be good news for everyday uh, individuals. Of course, the middle and lower class are going to be hit the hardest. The upper class, they don't really care. They're going to make money either way. And so nobody's bleeding, you know, shedding any tears for them. I get that. I, 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 I get that. But um, unfortunately, it just it is what it is. We'll see. Um, AMD gave earnings yesterday. Uh, big sell-off you can see over here. Uh, got as high as almost 101. Uh, came down to 90 flat, and then we are now trickling back towards 98. Uh, took a little bit of a loss on this. I was trying to trade it uh, to the long side. Got smoked out on this bad boy, and then it ended up going in the direction I wanted. Super annoying, but, you know, it happens. Um I will, I will give you this. You know, it seems like there's just a lot of negative news in the market, a lot of negative news coming up in the market very recently. And uh, the, the bulls are, you know, taking in strides right now. So definitely, realistically, a, a good thought that, you know, I, I've said it yesterday and I've, I'll say it again today. Um, I think at this point, we need a massive negative catalyst to change the momentum. Now, of course, when we get that massive catalyst, when we, we get the next, um, you know, CPI print, when we get the next uh, Fed meeting that says, you know what, no, we're not just going to raise rates by 25% the rest of the year. We're going to raise rates by 100 or 150 because, quite frankly, they should be doing that. Then it's it's going to happen. But the fact is, is I don't think they're going to be doing anything catastrophic to you know interest rates or anything else until uh, the November election cycle starts to uh, show faces what is going to happen. So definitely, just uh, my initial thought here: the S and P five hundred, the Nasdaq, everything is just moving absolutely crazy to the upside. Coin today up twenty percent. Total bonkers. Um, I mean, really, these are just massive moves right here. And so if you see, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 you know, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, we were sitting pretty at 52. And now we're at, you know, a $30 move. That is huge. Now, of course, um, I, I like coin. I, I like it from a, um, a fundamental or a technical standpoint. But at this point, I don't see it being, uh, you know, this, this valuable. Now, of course, uh, I understand that a lot of the... I understand that a lot of um, oh. ah, it's not going to come back down that low not anytime soon. I do understand that a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, the cryptocurrency space is is kind of putting up a big fight right now. So that is definitely um, definitely a big uh, a big catalyst to the upside. Apple, as long as Apple keeps making this move right here, um, I don't foresee any sort of reason as to why the markets are going to go down because apple it's been what um half a year from its all-time highs at 180 came back down to 130 now back at 166 uh we are making a push for that last fibonacci line right there so definitely uh is, is it getting overextended sure a little bit but is it um you know i mean look at this trend line right there it's just a thing of beauty i do however stand by my comment of when this thing reverses, it might be pretty pretty intense. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, I would love to see after tomorrow, if we make another leg higher to 168, I'm going to start buying some 160 puts and see how those trade out. Uh, 160 put is kind of based on that daily, and I'll show you right here. I'll probably get them like a short-term put, to be honest, too. So I'll probably get mm, two weeks, 
two weeks. Well, I guess tomorrow's Thursday, so so two and a half weeks. Two weeks, not including uh, at the end of this week. You know, look at some puts for just a ten dollar move to the downside. Uh, 160 puts. I still think that we have a, a leg for this thing to move down on. But of course, I could be wrong. We will see how that one all turns out. Uh, AMC up seven and a half percent. Oh, essentially the entire market is up right now. So what I want to do is kind of uh, focus on some of the markets that are not as high. Now, Walmart uh, responds today and Walmart is acknowledging after these bad earnings made a big, big push back to the upside. But Walmart is now laying off people. So again, I said it before, um, you know, is the supply chain issues similar to the the employment, absolutely, but uh, I, I think we have not really felt it. And the thing is, is once those layoffs occur, when people can no longer afford their lifestyle, when people can no longer afford their monthly payments, and by the way, student loans haven't even come back on yet. Are people even being evicted from their homes if they're foreclosing? I don't know, but I do know this. Student loans haven't come back on yet. And so the middle class, the people who are undoubtedly you know, left working, uh, they're the ones who are going to have a massive you know, change to a negative side uh, with their down payment or not their down payments with their monthly payments that is going to make spending drop even further now spending across the board is down consumer sentiment is down and so uh, Robin Hood is laying off 25% of their staff it is unbelievable that the market is going up actually I can assume the reason this is going up is because Robin Hood is laying off 25% of the staff so a lot of companies have a lot of fat a lot of bloat and that corporate bloat not just corporate but at the lower level bloat is costing a lot in uh, salaries as well and so by cutting staff there's more room for profit now a lot of people over over hired which is also going to make things look bad in the short term but I am not convinced I still think that uh, I'm not saying that this is a not a relief rally and let's go back to things like Tesla so Tesla it's moving up Tesla votes tomorrow do they want to go forward ahead with that uh, split I believe what is on the table right now is a three for one split um, you know, a couple weeks ago when we were at 600, I thought I was going to get shot down. I was like, no way, no way they're going to do a three for one split. Now that it's back at the 900s, I absolutely do think they will do a three for one split. I mean, that's going to end the stock at $307 if they did it tomorrow. Now that's they vote on it tomorrow. It will not switch tomorrow, but uh, that, that put the stock at $307. This is still, still a good size uh, stock. Now, of course, I've been trading options lately. I can trade. I could trade the options. I could trade the shares. It doesn't matter. Uh, but the question is, is what exactly is it going to do to the share size? Uh, we'll see. But I think if um, if it does a split, it's going to have a nice big move to that. You know, post split. Uh, but uh, and then so let's take a look right here. Uh, if you can kind of gander over here, uh, Tesla has. Let's zoom way out. So Tesla's been in this downward trajectory here, broke down a couple times and it gobbled it back up. And then we do have this kind of downward channel here uh, on both sides. We broke through it, bounce. If you're kind of a follow this imaginary line here, uh, broke through it, bounce. And now we added some resistance here. These are all, I'll, I'll move those later. Um, came back down almost what I thought was going to be back into the bottom of this trail, which would have ended us about 580, which was my price target. And then we're starting to break above it. Came in, fake break, back down. But now we are breaking to the upside. Got as high as 850, back down to 780. Got as high as 934, back down to 900, 880. And now we are making a squeeze to break this line here so a little bit of a fake break there now the question is is are we now the question is is where is this going to head because this is exactly where i think i'm looking and this is where a lot of other people are going to be looking too um, over here with Tesla, you know, are we going to, depending on tomorrow, are we going to break down? I actually would not be surprised and would not dislike if it comes down 900, get some shares at 900, uh, take some as a break of 20. And then if we can break above 30 onto the upside, I still have a price target at 950 by the end of this week. Uh, there's of course, I'm not invested in anything that has me, you know, live in, uh, you know, set by this number, but of course, you know, it is such a whole number. If we can break above that 930, then uh, 936 seems to be the next area of support. And then after that, 950 it is. So um, 
I'm really confident that 950 is going to be on the table unless of course we do have a reversal i think actually based on just how much upward momentum there is on this though i think if we do have a reversal to the downside it's going to be short-lived and back up it goes so um that's just kind of the 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 pain points for me right now no major earnings today except lucid did give earnings also down in after hours i think earnings were no bueno um let's see there you go so earnings on lucid were um all that unfavorable down over 10 percent down 11 and you know 12.5% now and back to it. So that is it for me. If you have any questions, reach out. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next one.